I'm just getting started with our Alder Lake coverage. MSI sent me a bunch of cool stuff to play with. We did our reviews. You know, the news is out. Basically, Alder Lake is a single core monster. Alder Lake, of course, is 12th generation Intel CPUs. Intel's definitely taken the single thread performance crown, but the question here is around the iGPU and what are your prospects for future upgradability? <laughs> i9 is a monster, no doubt. 16 cores, 8 performance cores, and 8 efficiency cores, rocking a sustained 241 watt PL2. That means at the wall, we're seeing wattages like 700 watts when you're using a discrete GPU like the awesome MSI, the Supreme X3090. But what about the iGPU? What if you're looking for something like the i5? The i5 is also a monster, and the comparison between the i5 12600K and say the 5600X, there's no comparison. There would be no reason to buy the 5600X. It is not a good value at $300 when you can get an i5 for about $300. That's where Intel would want me to stop talking, I'm sure. But there is a little bit of a fly in the ointment, and that is the motherboard price. Z690 motherboards are considerably more expensive than their AM4 counterparts. Now, there are probably other LGA1700 motherboards coming that are gonna be less expensive, but right now, dollar for dollar, your dollars go farther on the AM4 platform than they do with Z690. And you don't necessarily even need Z690 for the i5, but the i5 can do PCI Express 5.0. It does have a monstrous amount of PCI Express connectivity. You can check our other motherboard reviews if you want more information on that, but it's basically 16 PCI Express lanes on this side of the chip and 24 lanes of PCI Express 4.0 on this side of the chip. So that is a crazy amount of PCI Express bandwidth. Yeah, it's, DMI 4.0 is eight lanes of PCI Express 4.0's worth of bandwidth, so that's 16 gigabytes a second to the chipset. The chipset actually provides some of the additional peripheral PCI Express connectivity, but let's not get too off into the weeds. This video is about the i5 and the monster crazy performance. You'd be crazy not to buy it. But uh, there's other CPUs that exist around the $300 price point, like the 5700G. The 5700G, with maybe a little bit of a pricing discount, say around $300, gives the i5 a run for its money. Not in terms of CPU comp computation or anything like that, it's a, it's a 65 watt part, but I'm talking about the iGPU. When I initially looked at the, the iGPU in the i9, and later the i5, I was initially very, very excited. Intel has made huge improvements here, leaps and bounds over prior generation GPUs. Their work on XE is no doubt paying off. There's a lot of really exciting stuff. There's a ton of reviews about that that you can check out, not on this channel, just on the internet. You can read about it, everything's good. So I was kind of expecting the XE GPU to give embedded Vega, especially in these 65 watt parts, a run for its money because this i5 can use up to 150 watts of power, give or take, out of the box. That's the K-series part, and that's with the unlocked PL2. That's a lot of power, and that's a lot of power you can put toward the GPU. But what I've found with the Intel iGPU uh, running older AAA titles like Shadow of the Tomb Raider is there's a lot of bugs. There's a lot of bugs and the performance really isn't there. Let's, let's get into the benchmarks. So breaking this down, initially I was very encouraged by the results. I did some initial game testing, especially games like, you know, CSGO and Dota and things like that. Esports titles and it's, and it was, you know, very surprising because the performance was so good. I was like, oh, they're, they're going to give the Ryzen plus Vega APUs a run for their money. Uh, but the reality is they really don't, and there may be something wrong with the iGPU, or there may be something wrong with my testing, I'm not really sure. When I was doing the testing, the iGPU would not really throttle up. And so in games like Borderlands, the performance really wasn't very good with the iGPU, even at 720p low settings. Uh, we tried locking the performance at two gigahertz, locking the core clock speed, the iGPU at, at two gigahertz, and that helped dramatically, and it also wasn't unstable. So why doesn't it do that out of the box? Because they're kind of squeezing as much performance as possible out of this. I also was curious about DDR4 versus DDR5. Maybe it's the DDR4 platform that's causing a problem. So for our DDR4 testing, I use the Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X. There's a full review coming on this motherboard. This is a perfectly reasonable DDR4 motherboard that comes in around that $200 price point, you know, uh, consumer price index inflation notwithstanding. And this motherboard, um, you know, it has the GPU outs. It's only got the uh, the single 
PCI Express 5.0 slot if you do add a GPU later. But um, there wasn't really a huge difference in most games moving between DDR4 and DDR5. Uh, Dirt was a notable exception. DDR5 on the Intel platform um, with Dirt 5 seems to be pretty good. But you know, going through the rest of the benchmarks, the performance of the iGPU on the i5 is maybe a little disappointing given the absolutely monstrous single thread performance. And it's, it's frustrating because if you ever do upgrade to a discrete GPU, the i5 is going to far outperform the 5700G. That's just owing to the ridiculous clock speed. In terms of, you know, compute per unit power versus compute per unit power, well, the 5700G is gonna top out less than 100 watts through the AM4 socket in the, the worst case bursty scenario. It's a 65 watt TDP. It can, it can use a little bit more power than that uh, for short durations. But uh, the i5 can run at 140, 130, 40 watts pretty much continuously uh, using you know, the monitoring to sort of figure that out. So power for power, the i5 has got a lot more power to work with. But at $300, you know, the cost differential, like if you're concerned about the cost of electricity, at least on the i5 scale, I don't really think that's enough to worry about. I'm not sure that it's enough to worry about on the desktop side where we're talking about a delta of like 100 watts, worst case scenario. It's way less than 100 watts delta. The i5 is actually pretty efficient. Um, actually, Alder Lake in general is pretty efficient overall if you power limit it. it with the i9, I could limit the power to like 65% of that 241 watt PL2 and get 93% of the performance. So that's another video. The i5 is an impressive CPU in its own right. It's just the iGPU was not as impressive as I'd hoped. And that's really what I wanted to showcase in, in this video. And there are some sort of nuanced side conversations we can have about that. But if you look at the benchmarks and you look at the overall performance, there's not a lot there. But at the same time, there's also a lot of potential for improvement because I don't think the GPU is really clocking the way that it should. And certainly we saw visual artifacting and stuff like that in Tomb Raider. I actually tried two other motherboards that have video out and we were able to see the same or similar artifacting from the i5 CPU under test, whether we're using DDR4 or DDR5. Now the DDR4 that we're using has crucial ballistics memory. It is DDR4 4000 memory. And that can be a little misleading because it's like, oh my gosh, DDR4 4000, that's unrealistically fast. The sub timings on that kit are not actually the fastest. I actually did try a couple of other different speeds, 3200, 3600 with that kit, adjusting the sub timings so that the actual real world performance was, was basically the same. It didn't, there wasn't like some magical sub timing that will give you 10 FPS. In, in my mind, the iGPU performance at 720p is not really acceptable for older AAA titles like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's fine for esports titles, don't get me wrong. But, you know, looking at some of these older AAA titles is kind of the benchmark to know how we're doing with the iGPU. Um, there's a pretty big difference between uh, Ryzen plus Vega and where Intel is with the iGPU. And that's maybe one strategic mistake that Intel made with the i5, because the i5 also had an iGPU that dominated, and we know they can, because XE is actually pretty good. Uh, it would be a lot more of a slam dunk choice to select Intel. With AM4, you know, if you do upgrade to a G discrete GPU, you could also replace your CPU later, and who knows what future AM4 CPUs would be. I think if it were me, and I were angling to get a discrete GPU, shortages notwithstanding, I'd probably angle for the Intel side because the other thing with the i5 is that it's 10 cores. The 5600X, remember, is six cores. So when AMD basically put the final nail in the coffin as four cores as the mainstream desktop, Intel has put the nail in the coffin of six cores as being mainstream, in, in my opinion, at least at these price points. Because if you can get six performance cores plus four extra efficiency cores in the i5, and the CPU performance is kind of what dominates, why wouldn't you do that? That's an incredible value. So yeah, just six cores, it's like, okay, the 5700G, that's eight cores. That's an option. And I know there's a 5600G, which is six cores plus Vega. I use that on one of the ASRock desk mini machines and I really love that. But um, yeah, I think eight cores is the new six cores because the i5 is six plus four, which is 10 cores, which is completely nuts. And to be sure, I think we're gonna see some, some other CPUs even less than $300, probably like 200 or under if I were guessing, that uh, is less than 
four efficiency cores, and so it'll be less total cores than 10, but good Lord, what a, what a value, what a price on that. So this has been a quick look at i5 performance. We're planning the same sort of comparison with the i7 as to this one, not with the iGPU, but just i7 versus i9. This is about $200 cheaper street price. Is it worth saving the $200 and spending it somewhere else? Spoiler alert for that video. Yes, save the $200 and get the i7. You don't need the i9 except in some very narrow use cases. We're gonna take a deeper dive in that video soon. If you have any questions or thoughts about that future video, definitely let us know in the comments below so that I can include it. And also get subscribed and up to and all that, please. Thank you, I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out and you can find me in the Level 1 forums.